We are beginning tonight with the biggest of all big political events in the country today. It was the kickoff of the Values Voter Summit, a conclave of conservative Christian activists organized under the mantle of the Family Research Council. Today and through the weekend, the summit will host many of the leading lights of the conservative movement and nearly all of the marquee Republican politicians in the country and the 2012 presidential hopefuls. There's Mitt Romney, Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty, Texas Governor Rick Perry, Bill O'Reilly from the Fox News Channel, conservative ethics guru come problem gambler Bill Bennett, the top Republican in the House John Boehner, the top Republican in the Senate Mitch McConnell, Republican rising star Eric Cantor. It's an event where elected Republicans like Congressman Chris Smith of New Jersey, for example, can feel confident using their most conservative, base-pleasing rhetoric. Never in all of those years have I been more concerned, and I know you share that, and I know our panelists share that, about the abortion promotion coming out of the White House. The culture of death promoted by Barack Obama, by his Secretary of State, by his Cabinet, by Sebelius, by the sub-cabinet and by appointees, by czars, is outrageous and it's unconscionable. The Obama culture of death. You know, those were totally the best hoodies out of all the Obama campaign swag. You have to admit, right? Remember those with the little reaper on them? Culture of death. Uh, along with the culture of death podium pounding today, Congressman Mike Pence also went off on the czar issue. You know, I do think members of Congress should be required to read bills, but I got to tell you, I'd be just about as happy if more of them read this a little more often, the Constitution of the United States of America. And nowhere in here can I find the word czar. Washington, D.C. must become a no czar zone, starting here and starting now. I wonder if Bill Bennett was in the room when Congressman Pence said that. Mr. Bennett was the first President Bush's drug czar, you'll remember. So maybe Congressman Pence had to chase Bill Bennett out of the no czar zone that he declared in D.C.? Aside from the conservative celebrity sightings, it's the topics of the breakout sessions at the Values Voter Summit that really can give you a sense of the overall direction of the group and of the, frankly, the types of things that these base voters will be looking to hear from the politicians who are there courting them. There's one that's called True Tolerance, Countering the Homosexual Agenda in Public Schools. There's another one called Global Warming Hysteria, the new face of the pro-death agenda. The description on that one reads, quote, if people People are the problem. What's the final solution? There's also a session called The New Masculinity. Quote, feminism has wreaked havoc on marriage, women, children, and men. It's time to redress the disorder it has wrought, and that must start with getting the principles and ideals for a new masculinism right. Masculinism to combat the evils of feminism. It's important to remember this isn't just a conservative for conservative Christian activists. This is where the Republican Party goes for votes. Nine currently serving members of Congress spoke at the event just today, including the Republican leadership from both the House and the Senate. And this is an important stop for Republican presidential hopefuls. Former Arkansas governor and weight loss self-help book author Mike Huckabee, for example, was there trying to shine up his foreign policy and national security bona fides. Here we are gutting the integrity of the CIA and calling them liars while at the same time treating suspected terrorists like rock stars and giving them refuge in Bermuda. Bermuda, by which I believe he means Bermuda, which makes me think he's referring to the poor Uyghurs who were found to be not enemy combatants and not guilty of anything, but who we nevertheless held in Guantanamo for seven years before we sent them to go work on golf courses in Bermuda. Uh, Mike Huckabee is no stranger to the Values Voters Group. Um, he, he was one of the top-tier Republican presidential candidates who attended the Values Voter presidential debate during the primary season, at which he and the other candidates stood on stage at their respective podiums while a choir opened the proceedings with an anti-patriotic song titled, Why Should God Bless America? The point of the song is that God shouldn't bless America because America is not worthy of being blessed. 
because of abortion and the Supreme Court ruling against prayer in schools and other things that conservatives don't like. Why should God bless America? A song about God rightfully hating America is the song that the values voters folks used to kick off their presidential debate in this past election cycle. Since none of those candidates who stood there before the choir singing about America not deserving to be blessed by God ended up getting elected president since the Republicans lost, this year the reason to pay attention to this summit in Washington is to look for who the conservative movement is looking to for new leadership. Their de facto keynote speaker today, the, the culminating speaker who the speeches by Mike Pence and Mike Huckabee and Chris Smith and Mitch McConnell and Eric Cantor all led up to today, is, it was, um, it was, it was someone who needs no introduction, actually. I was confident. I did see it in my head. I did see me competing for Miss Universe. I did see that coming because I knew who I was and I knew that Miss USA wanted me. I knew that they had needed me. They needed a woman like me. And the Values Voter Summit apparently needed someone like opposite marriage defender and former Miss California Carrie Prejean as well. I knew as soon as I said that, as soon as I didn't give the politically correct answer, that there was no way I would be Miss USA. At least that night. <laughs> Little did I know I would be, I feel as though I miss universe, but. <laughs> the crowd goes wild. She actually really brought the house down at the Values Voter Summit, even without actually being Miss Universe. Um, just being a nationally sought speaker for events like the Values Voter Summit. Despite the awkwardness of the emergence of photos of her topless modeling after this whole scandal, Carrie Prejean has become a poster child for the conservative movement. And Carrie Prejean said today that she knows that she deserves it. Why me, a 22-year-old young woman? who had the courage and the bravery that not many people have. Confidence is a big part of winning beauty pageants. Also, elections. Being a 22-year-old college student, not really into politics, at least I wasn't at the time. <laughs> but now, I have a new outlook on this. It's my favorite part. And I am disgusted at the way some people can be so intolerant. It disgusts me. Carrie Prejean, champion of tolerance for her brave stance against other people's civil rights. Last year at the Values Voter Summit, this speaking slot that she had today was filled by former Republican House Speaker Newt Gingrich. This year it was Carrie Prejean as the Republican Party continues to beat a fascinating path out of the political wilderness. Joining us now is Mark McKinnon, former advisor to President George W. Bush and Senator John McCain. He's currently a contributor to the Daily Beast and vice chairman of the public relations group, Public Strategies. Mark, thank you so much for being here. Sure, Rachel. Thanks for having me on. I know you love the Republican Party. You are personally responsible for uh, a significant amount of its electoral success over the years. Tell me honestly, is there something good for the Republican Party about events like this, this Values Voter Summit, that I'm not seeing? Well, it, I mean, it is a, uh, these voters and, and the constituency there are an important part of the Republican Party. And there's a lot of energy and enthusiasm there and that, uh, you know, that I think that the press and Democrats kind of write off these sort of events and also the Tea Parties as, as populated by, you know, cranks. But the reality is that, uh, that there's a lot of, you know, very middle American voters at these summits and at these Tea Parties. And something's happened out there, and I, I, you know, I think it's like a cumulative effect perhaps, but there was like a tipping point that hit in August. And when I saw these town halls and Tea Parties and I see the, the summit today, 
Uh, I'm struck by the fact that people really aren't talking off talking points, that there's a lot of, you know, uh, people coming out from getting off work and coming out to these things because they're, they're really angry and they're frustrated. So something real is going on there, and I think it's, I think we're making a mistake to write off these rallies and these events because there's some real energy and enthusiasm going on out there. Now, interestingly, one of the most, the biggest political news to me last week was a poll that was published that shows that people who self-identify as independents is as high as it's been in 70 years. So, so people are getting disaffected, but the reality is they're being disaffected by both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. So there's, there's a lot going on politically out there, but uh, you know, this is an important component of the Republican Party. My view is that it needs, the party needs to be more tolerant, that we shouldn't be talking about uh, murder panels and, and uh, uh, calling people racist and liars.